fuck was that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? It's like I was playing fucking Phasmophobia. Oh my god, he's pushing me hard. What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because I was actually able to play their January update. So I thought that I would talk about it and show it off just a little bit. I actually did stream it, so if you want to watch that stream, I'll put a link to that in the description or in the eye icon at the top right. There's definitely a lot to explore in this next new patch. But before we get into that, be sure to like up the video so that more people can see it. And be sure to subscribe and ding that bell if you're new. Support the channel by checking out my Patreon or clicking on that join button underneath the video. Alright, let's get into it. So it seems like Void Interactive is actually keeping their promise. A promise that was told to a lot of supporters that we would get to see content before anybody else does. And yeah, we were able to play this just a little bit earlier than other people have. And if you're not sure how to actually access this as a supporter, you need to go to your Steam, right click on Ready or Not, go to Properties, Betas, select the beta you would like to opt into, and then click on the bottom one right there and then just press check code and then it should start downloading right away. Simple as that. And I'm assuming that's how it's going to be for a while. We're probably going to have to keep opting into this until it releases, I assume. This actually ended up starting another controversy. I mean, if you could call it that. People were wondering why certain people got a more updated version of the build and not other people. And so Void Interactive released a statement. This is like their third freaking statement this month. Like, what the hell? Ready or not, alpha testing branch clarification. To our community, we wanted to take a moment to elaborate on Ready or Not's alpha testing branch and how it relates to the live early access branch. While it is easy to understand why our players want access to new alpha content, we did not make this decision lightly or without reason. As a new video game developer, we managed to survive and bring Ready or Not to life thanks to our supporters. Not only was our financial commitment a critical lifeline for us, the feedback and criticism they provided throughout the game's alpha has also helped shape the game into a better product. Currently, we wish to continue to test content in a supporter-only alpha branch prior to launching for all players, giving us the opportunity to correct many errors as possible. In addition to showing supporters our application for believing in and backing Ready or not. This allows our limited staff to more easily receive, evaluate, and assimilate feedback into the game. By creating a short one to two week evaluation window, we create a much needed space to test things prior to releasing onto the live early access branch. For instance, we are currently testing foreign language localization and have discovered several omissions or errors caused by software glitches. As another example, we discovered a bug that merged every player currently playing the game into one voice channel together. The extra extra time afforded to us by this supporter exclusive testing period is invaluable for the purpose of managing our limited resources to fix game breaking or exceptionally tricky bugs before being released to everyone. With this method, we are not promising that the content released onto the live early access branch will be bug or error free, but we do believe it will be the cleanest version possible given a short window to resolve pertinent issues. We will continue to take feedback from all of our players and are taking steps to enhance our feedback mechanisms to make them more robust and easy to utilize. We have no plans of dividing our player base in any way, and this brief testing period is meant to ensure when new content rolls out that it is ready to play and enjoy with your friends. Any hot fixes or patches to outstanding issues will, of course, be sent out to the Live Early Access branch as we are capable of doing so. We look forward to fully releasing the content currently on the alpha testing branch to all players within the next week or two, and hope that we can continue to showcase our desire to communicate earnestly, honestly, and with the best interest of all players in our our hearts. You know, I think the whole interesting thing about this is that, like, they know what it's like to release a build to the public without actually getting it tested, you know, because that happened with the whole multiplayer debacle thing. So, I mean, it's great that they're actually doing that thing because they promised supporters that they would get the build first to test it and, you know, look through it and all that stuff. And that's exactly what they're doing here. So, that's pretty cool. I don't know if they needed to really, you know, explain it, but what it's gonna do, what it's gonna do, I suppose. All right, so that was that. So, before we get into the January update, there's a couple of new things that were 
dropped not too long ago and I'd like to talk about them really quick. The first thing that we got here is the Benelli 1301. If I remember correctly, there was already a Benelli in the game at some point, but it looks like they have an FBI HRT version and a regular version. The difference with the HRT version is that it just looks like it has a more chrome coating with a side rail to hold shotgun shells. A lot of people were asking if you were going to be able to actually use that side rail to reload shotgun shells into the shotgun itself because you were able to do that in previous builds but to be fair it was pretty wonky when they tried to do it and the developer ended up responding to that saying before anyone asks the rack won't be able to be reloaded from yet we have the logic in the game but man did it make reload slow at the expense of being cool we're thinking of better ways to make that work like quad loading or something similar interesting i think that they should just give the player the option like press a button to switch between regular reloading or using the rack right there because there's no fast reloading on a shotgun right so tap r once to do the regular reload load where he just like puts it in from the bottom side right there and then double tap r if he wants to use the side rail or rack i'm sorry if that's how you call it there there you go or how would you do it let me know down in the comments below but anyways moving on to the next thing here they ended up dropping some more concept art for another cosmetic that we're eventually going to have in the game they're calling this outfit the pup which i'm not sure what that refers to and this is like the 90s swat uniform that la used to have at the time they got that one german looking helmet the ballistic PASGT helmet at least i think that that's what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it's cool to see. We also have an image here that gets a little bit of a closer look at uh, some of the headwear that you're going to be wearing if you decide to actually put on this type of cosmetic. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I think this was the one that was used during the uh, LA riots, right? Back in the 90s, I think, or something like that. Not too sure. After that, Gruncher ended up dropping another pistol. We've got here the 357 Snub Nose, a classic. These things are known to be loud, but very compact. Inaccurate, only good at close range. It's a cool little pistol to have into this game but I don't know if it's something that I would take in a battle. What do you guys think? Would you take it? Let me know. I imagine it'd be pretty fun though, but loud as shit inside of hallways. Moving on to the next thing here, we got a shortened version of the SBR 300. I think the SBR was probably my favorite weapon going into this recent update because they took out the scar and this one ended up becoming my favorite. And it looks like they actually have a shortened version of it. So that's cool. Great to have more options. Then after that, they ended up showing off two new tools or maybe it's just two combined into one. You got what looks like a hammer and a, crowbar looking thing. I have no idea what the name of these things are, but obviously you're going to be able to use this to open up doors. So that's pretty cool. Doors that are probably locked. These are probably better used on wooden doors than metal doors, but I guess we'll see when we're able to use them. So that's neat. Moving on to the next thing here. They're showing off pictures of Penthouse, I believe. I honestly didn't know that we already had Penthouse. I thought it was a level that was actually new to the January update, but it turns out we've already had it, which is kind of unfortunate. I thought that that was a new map, but oh well, at least it's getting updated. Cool to see that. I was actually able to play it, and if you want to watch a video of that me going through the map by myself i'll have a link to that in the description or at the top right on the eye icon one of the developers decided to show off a concept idea for a bunch of the door traps to be added let's take a look at them here the one at the top left says an ankle level trap basic grenades and pipe bombs when the pin is pulled grenade drops to the floor and you're basically screwed the one in the top middle says chest level trap there is a sawed off shotgun attached to a wire tension causes one shot to be fired more tension fires on second shot this honestly reminds me of the freaking trap that I saw in uh, The Nobody. He opens up a door and boom, freaking shoots his friend. I saw I was like, damn. Moving on to the next one here, we got double wire trap can be made lethal. Firecrackers release confetti series of bursts will probably scare the shit out of you. <laughs> So this is just a confetti trap, it won't kill you. Would this one count against us though? I mean, I wouldn't mind these types of traps. It's just, if it's just a confetti one and not a bomb, you should just like get this and put it inside the freaking the hub area or the HQ. That'd be fun to go through. Uh, speaking of the HQ, it actually now has a timer. There's a button that you gotta click in order to start it. Click that and then go through the course. So you can actually like race against the clock to get to the very end, but you have to actually shoot every target that's in there in order to get the clock to stop. So if it doesn't stop, then that means you did not shoot one of the targets. I know, cause I tested it out myself. But anyways, one of the the bottom right here is the alarm trap which has actually been added into these newer maps and yeah it's kind of hard to see those ones you gotta get used to those another one that they're showing off here is the electric trap will hurt you or the squad when the handle is used can be avoided by breaching tools c2 ram and kick that would be 
Interesting. I'd like to see that. That would definitely be interesting. I mean, you wouldn't actually be able to peek the door. I think my biggest issue with all these traps is that it's going to be really hard to see those wires if you're looking upwards with the Omphi wand. Like, you'd really have to look up there, and I don't even think the Omphi wand looks up that far. So they'd have to fix that if they wanted to add these things in here. But I mean, these are cool traps. I definitely like a variety, even though there's a lot of people that are pissed off that there even is traps to begin with. Screw them. Keep adding traps. All right, moving on to the next thing here. One of the developers ended up showing off an LPVO magnifier. It isn't usable but the alternate aim has a little something special for you. Oh snap, is that, um, that's laser point shooting, I just realized. He's not only showing off the scope here, but he's also showing off laser point shooting that was in the previous update. Cool. It's nice to see these features getting added back into the game. I think I actually have another picture of that scope, if I'm not mistaken, from the multiplayer. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, I think that's the same scope, right? From the multiplayer. All right, and that seems to be about it for the newer stuff. Before we get into the January update, I need to take a, a break. Let's see what we got here. Uh... Do, 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 do. Chocolate. Oh, what the fuck? It ate my quarter. Son of a bitch. All right, lemon tea. There we go. Come on, baby. Ah, uh, lemon tea. That's the good shit right there. Yes, this is not a mod. This is actually something that's in the game. They actually took the time to do this. And I think the funny thing about this is that if you actually drink the strong coffee three times, basically gives you like a buff that allows you to basically run around like a maniac. You can only do this in the HQ, unfortunately. It wears off the moment that you go into a mission, but it does last for a while when you're running around the HQ. So that's cool. And that's pretty much it for all the new stuff, as far as I can tell. Let's go ahead and get into the January update. Starting with the new guns. You've got the new VKS, which is apparently a carbine non-lethal AR-15 pepper ball gun? This is like the first time I've actually seen something like this. And man, that is a gigantic freaking mag that's there. Holy cow. It's a cool looking gun, but kind of crazy looking. It's great to see that we have more non-lethals. It's a cool, interesting little carbine here. I haven't actually used it in action because, you know, I don't want to use it. But I imagine it works about the same as the paintball gun. But it's great to have more options. I hope that they add one of those ball cannon things where, like, you shoot it and it launches a big, like, rubber ball at people. <laughs> oh! You know. All right, moving on to the next one here. We got the G19 G5. Honestly, this pistol doesn't look any different from the G4. I honestly don't even know why they bothered. Like, you probably couldn't even tell that this was a new weapon. But you know, it's whatever. Up next, we got the Scar L. I was actually a bit confused with this one because I'm just like, well, wait a minute. Is it the Scar L that we had before in the previous update or is it a different one? Because the backside doesn't look right. In fact, the gun itself looks a lot smaller from what I remember. I'm not entirely sure, but you know, it is a good weapon. So at least there's that. They brought my Scar back, but it's just not the same Scar. The next weapon that they brought to the game is the BCM Mark I. This is a supporter exclusive weapon. It's actually a pretty good rifle. I wouldn't say that it's like God power or anything like that. Kind of feels more like the HK-14, if I'm being honest. There's not really much of a difference aside from, you know, just the way that it looks. But it's a really cool rifle, I gotta say. Glad to see that the supporters are getting more stuff, you know. And then we got the SLR-47.
which is just essentially an AK variant, kind of like the AK-74U, but more modern. It's a neat little weapon. It's definitely one that's fun to play around with, you know? I took it for a couple of spins every now and then, and it did not disappoint. Out of all the weapons that we got, the only one that I'm kind of disappointed in was the G19 Gen 5, because there wasn't really much of a difference with that one, so I don't even know why they bothered. But, you know, it's whatever. New weapons is new weapons, I guess. And yeah. Before we push on to the next thing here, there are a couple of honorable mentions. There are two new long scopes that have been added into the game. We've got the SDR 4x scope and the ATAC R 1-12x scope. These are cool scopes, but I think the interesting thing about them is that the SDR actually features canting. We're able to aim on different parts of the scope here. So if I press right click to hold it and then press P, it'll go to the top iron side of the scope here. Tapping P again will put it back in its regular position. And with the other scope, the ATAC, if you aim this one and tap P, it'll go into a laser pointing position. If I turn on my laser and my night vision goggles, you can see it a lot better. This mechanic is called laser point shooting. It's something that's featured pretty prominently in another indie game called Insurgency Sandstorm, and you could flick it back and forth with this particular scope. Hopefully they make it so that you could do it with every weapon and not just the scope, because that would be great for people that are just running NVGs on night maps. But yeah, looks like they just added both scopes to basically all weapons that are carbines or rifles. That's cool, but I really hope that you're going to be able to actually replace the button, because I really dislike where the current button is, P, because I really have to like reach over to freaking flick the gun back and forth. And at the time of this recording, they didn't actually have the button in the controls menu for me to replace, so that's going to come pretty soon, I assume. And that does it for the new weapons and attachments. Let's talk about the more simple stuff here. They implemented a paper doll crouch, which if you don't know what the paper doll is, it is the doll that is at the bottom left of your screen that shows exactly what parts of your body have been hit. Now when you crouch, it will crouch with you. Neat. Mirrors are now functioning in the game correctly if you have RTX. I have RTX, but it doesn't look as clear as the developers had, so I'm assuming it's just because mine isn't as powerful as theirs. They now have Vivox integration, which is essentially there to make the audio for voice chat sound a lot better and work a lot better. Initially, when this was integrated, they actually had to turn off voice chat because apparently it was like really bad when they first integrated it because it would literally irate people. But now it seems to be fine. Good thing I wasn't a part of that first part. <laughs> they added free look back into the game. I think that's cool, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well, wait a minute. This is as much as you can free look? That's kind of way less than you could do before. Well, at least it's back in the game, but at the same time, it's like, can we get a little more than just this? Actually, after a recent patch, it looks like they might have given the free look a little more leniency. It definitely feels a lot better than the last patch that they had, but there is a bit of a shoulder problem right there. But aside from that, it actually feels a lot better. So yeah, thank you. But anyways, talk no longer sounds like he's just reading off of a script. He sounds like he's actually supposed to be in the game where he is. Talk to element. Copy entry team notifying trailers. This is talk. Roger. Trailers inbound. Yes, it is the same voice actor. They just gave him a different filter and actually directed him better. See, I never really had a problem with the voice actor. It's just the way that he was directed, you know? Because he'd always be like, Roger that entry team. Like he's fucking Duke Nukem or some shit. I like Duke Nukem, but in a realistic tactical shooter game, like what? This is out of place. Like he's just reading off of a script in the previous update. Now, he actually sounds a lot better than he did in the previous update. Still not perfect, but a lot better than before. So that's great. Definitely helps with the immersion. Moving on to the next thing here. They ended up deleting certain cringe audio for the female voice actor. The, ooh, nice tattoos. And my mom is a Mexican maid or something like that. They finally deleted those and gave them better voice lines. Voice lines that would actually fit in the situation that they're in. So that's great. Okay, so that was all the minor stuff that was added in. Let's go ahead and talk about the bigger stuff. Starting with the smaller stuff. Starting with farm. A lot of people were telling me that there was supposed to be like another version of farm, but I did not see any different version of farm like at all. It looks pretty much exactly the same and there's no new mode, so I'm not really sure what people were talking about. So moving on to the next thing here. Gas station. Not a whole lot was added to gas station. The map has been slightly updated, like they added a little bit more to it. There's like a whole wall on the right side that wasn't there before. They added a little more assets to the map, but I mean, no matter how I look at it, like the gas station just looks too big and still continues to be my least like map, even though they added more assets to it. We'll see what it looks like when they get more assets in there, but I don't know, still looks too big to me. But they didn't really add too much to it. The most notable thing about about it is that it has a lot of new ambiences. Pretty noticeable when you go see um, that one character with his head blown off, Mudasar, I believe his name is. You could definitely see the ambience change just a little bit there. And you know something about the gas station? I noticed at this time of night, there's no freaking lights. Like you'd think at this time of night, a gas station would be lit up like a freaking Christmas tree, right? This is where Talk needs to explain to us here that maybe a shop owner
owner across the street noticed that the gas station was like dark you know at this time of night when it's always supposed to be like 24 hours right that guy across the street like used his binoculars to like look inside the freaking gas station and saw like a bunch of people with guns inside and that's how he notified the SWAT team and yeah that's how I think it should be but what do you think let me know alright we're gonna move on to the next one here the next map that we're gonna talk about real quick here is car dealership or Caesars dealership whatever it is the only thing that they added here is a new mode bomb threat and to be honest there's not really too much of a difference aside from the fact that there's now bombs in the area the bombs kind of like wrap around a uh, big pillar basically but aside from that there's not really too much different with the map or at least none that I can notice so let's move on to the next thing here Port Hoken also got a new game mode bomb threat again the map doesn't seem to be any different but I did notice that the rain seems to look a lot better even though I thought that the rain was already pretty good to begin with but now it just seems a lot better looking but aside from that the map doesn't look too different but uh, the only thing that I feel that these bomb modes really need is just the extra couple of minutes because I feel like I really am rushed to try to get these bombs done and also they should definitely just get rid of the freaking door traps in that mode because I'm just running around like a maniac trying to stop the stupid bomb I'm like oh my god I'm so afraid to freaking rush through a door but I have to but I'm afraid I'm gonna trip a trap because I'm literally under time to do anything I think that's why 4 actually did it better because before you knew that there was actually bombs in the hotel it made you go through at least half of the level and had bombs placed in strategic places where you could pick them up as you're going through the linear level I'm not saying that they should follow swap 4 but I'm just saying that they just seem to do it better when it comes to the bomb threats because I don't I didn't feel as rushed as I did in this game mode here I like to take things slow you know I like to take my time and go methodically on how I want to do something so bomb threat is probably like my least liked mode I'm not saying that it's bad I'm just saying that I prefer to move through these maps methodically you know but those are just my thoughts what are yours let me know I just realized that we're missing a map this update ended up launching with another map called compound I think it was and I actually remember playing it on stream but it looks like they actually took it away because I don't see it here anymore but I still have it on my uh stream that I did when I first tried out the update yeah I'm not seeing the compound on the map anymore well, that sucks I thought something was missing huh well if you want to see what it looks like I played it on uh my stream and of course it was a very early build so obviously it's just textures really but I thought that it was a pretty cool small map pretty deadly not gonna lie but anyways all right moving on to the meth map here before we get into the new mode I want to talk about the ones that are currently existing there's not too much that changed with the original game modes the only thing that's like really different is just like the kids bedroom like it definitely looks a lot more lived in apparently the kids name is Molly there's also this creepy radio that's kind of on the kids counter right there people actually took the audio and put it on the discord and if you listen to it it sounds normal but if you start skipping there's like a big static noise which is literally ear busting scared the crap out of me when I first freaking jumped and skipped and I think that there is some subtle changes around the house too but I'm not really sure what's different and what's new actually I do distinctly remember the bathroom when you walk inside on the left side being a lot more dirtier looking more disgusting like there's a lot more vomit on the floor and stuff every TV has a static noise it's supposed to be white noise but it honestly sounds like a fan to me like one of those mini fans that you put up to your face so you can cool down just a little bit I believe there is some uh, ambience changes in the tunnel area I noticed that there was actually a creepy creaking noise in the tunnel if you step over that wood so yeah there are some very subtle changes but nothing too significant when it comes to the new game mode that they just added in called raid there's a lot of new stuff like for one in this new game mode the game doesn't start you in front of the house anymore it starts you next to a laundry mat just down the street from the regular meth house and the laundry mat really does look like a freaking laundry mat kudos to the person that made this laundry mat because it actually looks really good very believable but if you're the same person that made the newer version of gas station then uh big bruh moment but anyways once you clear the gas station this is where i would like talk to contact entry team again and say entry team this is talk we have reports of the same hooligans that you just dealt with coming from down the street and he could give you the address of the meth house we need you to go there and investigate like the name of the mission should be like laundromat where you're supposed to go and investigate a laundromat but then find out that the people that raided the area are actually squatting in a house that's not that far from your location i think it would really play to the idea that the SWAT officers are stretched thin in this version of LA because they just dealt with something and now they have to walk up the street and deal with something else and this is where you could have like one of your squad mates if you're playing solo comment on this seriously we just dealt with something and now we have to go do something else Ugh, I don't get paid enough for this shit. So yeah, I think that would play into their whole law enforcement is kind of stretched thin kind of theme that they're going for. And also it would give the player the reason to actually walk over to the house, right? Because right now you just clear the laundry mat and you're just kind of like wondering what to do, you know? Guess I'll just walk over here. Like there's no direction for the player. They're just kind of like guessing at this point. Like, oh, I guess I'll go this way. But yeah, those are just my thoughts. What I would like to see. What do you think? Let me know. But anyway, so we finished the laundry mat and there's a little mini environment that we can explore. There's a bunch 
bunch of like cool art on the wall and a lot of foliage to look through. I mean, I think it's cool, but I feel like it's really hard to see bad guys, especially at night. Like the NVGs aren't that great and the flashlight like ring or circle or whatever you want to call it is like too damn glow and dim. I really hate the fucking flashlight, not gonna lie. I mean, I prefer the flashlight to the MVGs, but I like the way that the flashlight was back in the multiplayer than I do here. Void, please fix. They need to fix the MVGs and make the flashlight a lot brighter and the circle a lot bigger because I can't see jack shit. But anyways, we walk up to the meth house, but there is now another option where you can actually go into the house that was on the right that looks like it was being fumigated. It wasn't open to us before in the previous mode, but now it is. Walking inside, it honestly reminds me of that one house from uh, Rainbow Six Siege. There's like an uncanny similarity to it. It's actually pretty interesting. But I think the most surprising thing about this map is that there's actually a makeshift bridge that goes in between both of the houses. When I saw that, I was like, whoa, I didn't even see that coming in from the houses on the front there. That's pretty cool that they built a makeshift bridge. But aside from that, the meth house didn't seem to be all that different. Although I don't think the kid is actually in this map. I believe they took her out for uh, the raid. Side note, there was also like a dead dog in the back. And I was like, oh no, not the dog. Oh. Another big noticeable difference with the map though is that there is no tunnels in the back of the map there that were featured in the previous modes. Those have been blocked off by like trash bags. So you can't go back there anymore. But I mean, that's fine. The map is pretty big as it is already. So that's cool. I like the map. I like it a lot actually. And that's pretty much all I really got to say about the game mode. I quite like it a lot. I don't know what else there is to say about it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Another map that got new game modes and a map change up is Hotel. The Wenderly Hills Hotel. It got two new game modes, which is Active Shooter and Hostage Rescue. The Hostage Rescue, in my opinion, seems to need a little more work because I feel like they shoot the hostages just a little too fast. But anyways, the thing that I really want to talk about here is just the map itself because they really opened it up with the hotel map because now you start from the front because in the previous game modes, you started in like one of the levels of the hotel and you could go up a level and finish the game mode right there. And not much has really changed with that. I noticed a little bit of differences with like more ambience, more RTX effects around the area. But aside from that, not too much has changed. But with the new mode, you start out from the outside. You can actually get a good look at the city and I'm not entirely sure what part of LA this actually is or if this is actually LA that they're mimicking here. But the skybox is pretty incredible, I'm not gonna lie. This is like the first time I've seen a day map in Ready or Not, by the way. But anyways, they now give you the option to walk through the front door, which takes you into the lobby room. And the lobby area is basically gigantic, but it also gives you the option to go in through like a garage looking area. The garage is actually a lot tighter than I thought it was going to be, but nevertheless, it definitely adds onto the map. I feel like they could do a little bit more with the garage area because it does feel very empty, especially with the underground area that kind of looks like a construction area, but it's like completely empty. It has three hostages and a bad guy there. But aside from that, it's like walk in, walk out. I think like the real star of the map is just the area that's above because the bottom just seems very empty to me. The area that's above honestly feels like a maze to me. Like honestly, I was kept on my toes the entire time that I was going through that map. And ultimately it feels like it's very close quarters. There's just multiple places for suspects to pop up. Turning every corner was like a freaking nightmare. I honestly felt this map a lot by myself. It's a good map, a little smaller than I expected, but it's good and it's tough. I wouldn't say that this one was my favorite. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I liked it as much as I liked meth or twisted nerve, but it's definitely a great addition to the game and I definitely play it again with friends. I think the thing that really shines with this map is that it's one of those maps where you want to know what happened because you walk in and you notice that there's just a bunch of like dead bodies everywhere and you're sitting there like, huh, I wonder what happened. Why is there so many dead people and people with guns that are also dead too? From what I understand, Hotel used to be a thing where you had like white supremacist biker gang versus like a cartel type of group. I forgot what they were called, the Locos, Logos, or I don't know, something like that. But they were basically there to like fight each other. And that's what you and the SWAT officers are supposed to do, go in and break it up. But it seems like they switched it up just a little bit because I see both the biker gangs kind of dead there and the cartel guys also dead. So it seems like a different faction came in and just freaking rolled through and just gunned everybody down and took hostages. Like, that's what it seems like to me. But I don't know. Tell me what you think. Maybe it's a whole different story now. Either way, I think it's interesting. Maps not bad, but I would prefer to play with friends rather than AI. So those were the modes that were added to those two other maps. I think I actually liked exploring the maps more than I liked the modes, to be honest. But it's great for us because uh, more content. So uh, yeah, let's get into the last couple of things here. There are two new maps. The first one that we're going to talk about here is Fast Food. The map isn't finished, but the layout kind of reminds me of like, uh, El Pollo Loco or something, but it is just a fast food restaurant. It's honestly not that big. It's probably one of the easier levels. I ended up beating it like just under five minutes. Probably a lot less if I wasn't just exploring the map. It should definitely be like one of the first missions that you play just to get you started, I guess. No idea if they're going to expand it or anything, but uh, funny enough, this fast food restaurant is actually 
smaller than the gas station. I think it should be the other way around. But anyways, moving on to the next one here. You got another map that isn't quite fully textured out yet, but it's a lot bigger than the fast food restaurant. I believe this map is called Valley of the Dolls. I'm not sure what this means or what it's referencing or if it's even referencing anything, but it's kind of like one of those houses that you see in California. A really nice house in a more wealthy area. And basically what's going on in this house is that they're having some sort of party. There's a bunch of like balloons and presents everywhere at least at the very bottom i think it's like a three or four story house it can be a bit of a maze but it's not as big as the hotel i would say that this is more of a vertical map than it is a wide map it's definitely not as hard as the farm map or hotel but it's more like a mid-tier type of map it seems it only has one mode at the moment which is just barricaded suspects and yeah it's a pretty nice looking map aside from it not being textured one thing that i noticed about both of these maps is that they're both day maps oh my god i can't believe i've seen the sun for the first time in forever but yeah that's pretty much all i really got to say about this map before I end the video, I kind of want to show this thing that was just released as I was editing this video. It's what Ali calls the high rise balloon tower made up of 16,800 balloons and a more updated version of this map. Wow, that water looks really good. Look at those balloons and the sky box. Nice. Really hope that they keep that as like an easter egg or something like we have to like do certain things to make that thing spawn we could just like shoot the shit out of it that would be as good as bubble wrap and that's all i really got to say about this update man it's a freaking gigantic one it's a lot bigger than i thought it was going to be like wowzers the only problem with this is that we don't know when it's actually going to launch i'm assuming it's going to be at the end of the month but knowing void there is a possibility that they could probably push it back into february and honestly i mean it's not a big deal to me if they're gonna drop a banger like this to a bunch of people then you know i still give them time I think people can wait possibly well i'm gonna end the video here if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like right now then be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon or click on the join button that's underneath the video if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on ready or not or any other game that i decide to cover with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye